Joining us now in the studio is our correspondent, Nicole Tzedek. Nicole, let's talk about Trump mm -hmm. in all of this. Obviously, it seems like relations are, are headed downhill for Netanyahu and, and the Democratic Party. Of course, we know that you know, elections are coming up in the United States, so that has everything to do with the rhetoric that is coming out of the mouths of uh, Democratic leaders as well. But, you know, what is Trump saying in all of this? Where does he stand when it comes to Israel and, and in regards to this ongoing war? That has been, at least as of the most recent statements coming out of former President Donald Trump's mouth, that's been more surprising, so to say, than what's been coming out of the Democratic Party's mouth, because we've been hearing from the Democratic Party for really since the beginning of this war, and as the months and days go by, we've been hearing strong longer rhetoric coming from then, but Trump and Netanyahu, they used to be pretty close buddies. They had a pretty good relationship before, but now, as far as the most recent statements coming from Trump when asked in a Fox interview about what his message would be to Bibi right now, especially following Chuck Schumer's uh, pretty hard statement towards Netanyahu, Trump said that he would also say to finish the job in Gaza quickly and get back to this world of peace. And so, even coming from Trump saying that they want this war to be over as soon as possible. That's a stronger statement than some people had anticipated. Now, he's still not using any of the same words that we're hearing coming from the Biden administration when we might hear calls for a ceasefire or a temporary ceasefire. That, that never came out of Trump's mouth, but still, calling for the job to be over quickly, sooner rather than later, it still indicates that across the board, when we're looking at the uh, United States stance in this, they do want to see an end in sight. And I think that's what is frustrating to so many American politicians is that there is no end in sight because there's no plan for the day after. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Pazner, I can see you uh, listening intently to very, what she has Very good say. analysis, yes. <laughs> I want to add a few points yeah. with your permission. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, Netanyahu and Trump were great friends, which is true. But something went wrong there in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Somebody Certainly. told ex-President Trump that Netanyahu was among the first foreign politician to phone President Biden on his election. Yeah. And you remember that Trump was saying that the election uh, were rigged, so he did not accept the result of the election. So first of all, it is not true that Netanyahu was among the first. He was criticizing Israel for taking his time. I think it, it took him two weeks to call Biden to congratulate him. But somebody told Trump, and from this moment, the relationship between Trump and Netanyahu is not good. Mm -hmm. And now you see also the relationship between Netanyahu and Biden. It's also not good. So here, I believe, we really do have a problem. We do have a problem. That the personal relationship between Netanyahu and both parties in the United States at this moment is not good. It can be repaired. I have seen worse uh, mm -hmm. things. It can be repaired, obviously. But the one consolation, if I may say so, that everybody stresses that the relation with the state of Israel, between America and the state of Israel, continue to be friendly, mm -hmm. relation of ally, and they continue to supply arm and ammunition and, and, and the diplomatic umbrella. But we are in a very complicated situation now. And if I could give some advice, it would be of urgency for Netanyahu to try to repair as much as he can, mm -hmm. this relationship on both sides of the of the aisle, as they say, because it is not a good situation for Israel to be in that condition vis-a-vis -vis its biggest ally and friend. What comes next? I mean, I'm interested to hear, you know, what your take is on, on whether or not we are going to be seeing elections sooner than later, if there is a chance that we could see, you know, um, the, I guess, the, the dismantling of this government, if there are going to be defectors as a result of Netanyahu's choices in the coming weeks uh, in, you know, in the Gaza Strip. You know, Natasha, you asked me the $64,000 question. Right. I personally don't believe that we are going to see elections soon. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think that this government, which is not a unity government, but let's say it is an urgency government of, of an urgent situation, seems to me, for the time being, very cohesive. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, Gantz has not indicated any willingness to leave the government. Gidon Saar, I don't know exactly what he's up to. The coalition of Netanyahu, the 64, is very solid. So I know, I know what's going on in the streets here. There is no big popular movement to call for election. Yeah, you have some manifestation and some demands, and you see some... Uh, Protests. Uh, yeah, but you don't have a real, you know, tsunami of public opinion calling for election at this point. I mean, at this point, what would time. change that? Because, and, and by the way, yeah. excuse me, and the fact that the United States, Schumer especially, mm -hmm. a great friend of Israel, by the way, I know him, he is the greatest friend possible. But that he, he says, he, the American senator, says you should have election in Israel, this is an interference in, in another country's political process and should not have been done.